As Conor McGregor's coach, John Cavanaugh, says, when Conor went to the gym for the first time, he was nothing but the quarrel's head. As The Notorious recalls, he already had good boxing skills by that time, and he believed that MMA would be easy for him. He was looking for an MMA gym, and he found out that there was only one gym in Ireland, which belonged to John Cavanaugh. When he arrived in the gym for the first time, he asked Owen Roddy to spar with him. Conor landed some colossal body shots, which were forbidden according to the gym's rules, but John decided to forgive him for this time. McGregor's first sparring partner, Owen Roddy, soon became his striking instructor. After that, John decided to spar with McGregor himself. He took McGregor down and started beating him. At the same time, he screamed to him that this gym was the family and they should help each other to improve, not beat each other. Connor apologized and kept training hard. He was not missing the training, but he hated everything connected with grappling, wrestling, or jiu-jitsu. He would say, who needs grappling when I have my left hand? In 2008, McGregor made his debut fight and won via TKO in the second round. Soon after, he earned another victory against Mo Taylor via TKO in the first round. In his third professional fight, Connor fought against Artemi Setenkov, who had won some competitions in Sambo combat sport, so his primary weapon was submissions. Connor was very confident, and his confidence level even increased when his rival weighed 2 kg less than him. Connor invited all his friends and family members to watch his fight. Connor expected an easy win, but he was the one who was trounced. Artemi earned his sixth pro MMA win via knee bar in the first round. It was a tough time for Connor because he suffered a loss in front of his family and friends. He stopped training for a long time, and going back to the gym was not in his plans until Connor's mother called John and asked him for help. John went to Connor's house, talked to him emotionally, and convinced him to train again. Connor got back to the gym and trained very hard. But he refused to spend time improving his wrestling skills because he still believed that his left hand was enough to earn the victories. He added two more wins to his record, and after that, Cage Warriors offered him a contract and rival Joseph Duffy. The UFC fans know Duffy very well, and it's a well-known fact that he has very good jiu-jitsu. He managed to defeat Connor in less than one minute via arm triangle choke. John thought that he would never see Connor in the gym again, but... He was wrong. McGregor went to the gym and told John that he was ready to learn grappling and jiu-jitsu. Since that moment, he realized that MMA is not only striking and he needed to defend himself on the ground. After that, Connor earned four victories in a row, all via KO and TKO. He didn't stay out of Cage Warrior's attention, so they offered a contract to Connor for the second time. He won the first two fights easily via TKO and KO. After these victories, he earned his title shot against Dave Hill. Dave was considered a good fighter, but McGregor destroyed him. In the first round, he knocked down Dave several times, and at the end of the second round, McGregor won the fight with submission for the first time. Connor won his first ever title in the MMA. After that, he moved up and challenged Ivan Buhinger. This battle was held in the lightweight division. McGregor avoided Ivan's punch and landed a huge left hook. With this shot, he became double champ of Cage Warriors. Nevertheless, even though he was double champion of a promotion like Cage Warriors, he couldn't earn enough money to live independently. He tried to move with his girlfriend, Dee Devlin, but soon they moved to Connor's parents' house. As Connor says, Dee was trying to feed him healthy all the time, and while everyone doubted him, she was the person who supported and was giving him the power of not giving up. After winning the titles of the Cage Warriors, Connor and his manager were waiting for the offer from the UFC. Many Irish fans were texting Dana White to sign Connor in the promotion, but McGregor was losing hope and had stopped training. Soon after, John received the call and offered him a contract with the UFC. The debut in the UFC was held in Sweden against Marcus Brimage. By that time, Marcus was on a three-win winning streak without any defeat in the UFC. Lots of people expected that Marcus would destroy Connor's hype, but as McGregor mentioned many times before, he was not feeling any pressure and he was confident because he knew he would be the champion. He opened the fight with his hands high, Bruce Lee style. He showed phenomenal footwork, cutting corners and using his reach advantage against the shorter rival. He landed an impressive uppercut and hook combinations, and finally, he defeated Marcus via TKO in the first round. It was a dominant performance for a debutant, so he earned an extra 50K with this victory, which was at the time huge money for the Irishman. 
Connor and John decided to be active. They scheduled Connor's next bout against a very well-known and famous fighter in the world, Max Blast Holloway. Connor was dominant on the feet and on the ground. He landed some huge shots in the first round, but in the second round, he had some injury to his tendons. Therefore, Connor was not able to use his footwork. He decided to use his wrestling skills and take down Max. Connor trounced Holloway, but this was Connor's first win via unanimous decision. His 100% finishing streak had stopped there. McGregor needed around a year to fully recover. He could not fight, but he was trying to be active on social media. He kept answering all the comments and posts on Twitter, and he was using to his full extent his worldwide known trash talk. Connor was out for one year, but the UFC still offered them the fight, which was supposed to be the headline of the event. This event was held in Connor's hometown. The Irish fans created a fantastic aura before the fight. Connor's rival, Diego Brando, looked like a psychologically unbalanced person at the weigh-in ceremony. Finally, in 2014, Conor McGregor was headlining the event, and he defeated Diego via TKO in the first round. This fight was very emotional and unique for Conor because this event was held in Ireland. After defeating Diego and earning his third victory in the UFC, fans started expressing the desire to see a clash between the King of Rio, Jose Aldo, and the King of Ireland, Conor McGregor. UFC realized that this would be a great matchup, so they started working on that. McGregor was offered to share the octagon against a very famous fighter, Dustin Poirier. This is the first time they shared the octagon. Connor was the king of trash talk, and he was able to get in Dustin's head. Before the fight, McGregor was relaxed, smiling, while Dustin was angry. Poirier was a top contender and had more experience, but bookies considered McGregor the favorite in this bout. Dustin tried to land leg kicks, but soon after, McGregor landed a left hook behind Dustin's ear and slapped him. Connor earned another first round finish in his career. It looked like McGregor had done everything to earn his title shot. Still, champion by that time, Jose Aldo had already scheduled a fight against Chad Mendez, so Connor decided to be active and fought against German fighter Dennis Silver. Everyone expected McGregor to finish Dennis in the first round, but he managed to survive until the second round. After Connor finished Dennis in the second round, he jumped out of the cage, went to Jose Aldo, and started screaming. This was the last time Jose Aldo smiled in front of Conor. Finally, people witnessed a title fight between Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor. By that time, Jose was not just a champion in the UFC, he was N1 pound for pound fighter and was undefeated in the UFC. UFC had done its best to increase the hype before the fight also. They went to Dublin and Rio. They scheduled a gauntlet of press conferences. Conor laughed and spoke down to Aldo a lot. Connor stole Aldo's belt from the press conference, which brought out Aldo from his nest. Finally, Aldo's corner asked UFC to stop Connor. Before the fight, Connor had a knee injury, but he was waiting for this moment for so long, he could not refuse the battle. Instead, Aldo was out from this fight due to a rib injury. When Dana White visited McGregor's base and saw his coach John, everyone was shocked because of this news. What's up? This is what you call a moon awakening. Yeah. He broke his fucking rib. Oh my god. So what happens now? That's why we're here. We're here to talk to him. What, take a buddy shot? Sounds like a, He's a buddy shot? He got hit with a buddy shot? Mm -hmm. Fucking hell. We have a date September 5th here in Vegas, which just gives you another seven weeks. Yeah, no, but that's September. Whether I'm gonna take another one is the, is the question. <laughs> I didn't know that was that option, actually. Which I did. I knew that you would say that's that. That's what I thought. I knew you would say that. Thanks, man. Later. Coach. They said that Aldo had broken his ribs during the sparring session. When they woke up Connor and told him the information, he too was shocked. Soon after, UFC offered McGregor an interim title fight against Chad Mendez. It was a tough decision for McGregor's team because they were training for a striker like Aldo, so they were not focused on grappling, and Mendez was an outstanding wrestler. Finally, Connor said, When you are N1, you don't care if N2 will replace N3. As soon as this fight was for the title, he signed the contract. During the fight, Connor was landing some big body shots with spinning back kicks and hands. He had to move a lot to avoid Mendez's takedowns, but Mendez's tactic was simple. He was trying to take Connor down and keep the fight on the ground. Mendez had done a great job of takedowns and won the first round, but Connor had some good moments too. 
His body shots affected a lot of Mendez's stamina, and in the second round, Mendez shifted the battle to the ground. He was landing some massive elbows and was smashing Connor. The Irishman tried some elbows but was not effective. Unfortunately for Mendez, he decided to change the position and attempt a submission one minute before the bell. Connor escaped from the guillotine attempt and shifted the fight to the feet. As soon as McGregor got up, he landed some intense combinations. He mixed his middle kicks, uppercuts, and hooks. Finally, he gave a kick to the liver in a 1-2 combination by which Mendez was knocked out. People had never seen such an emotional Connor before. He won the title and he was happy, and he could not hold back his tears. He won the interim featherweight title, which meant that he was a mandatory fight for Jose Aldo. Connor didn't talk a lot before this fight, and he had just asked Jose to show up for the fight night. Instead, Jose was trying to talk trash, but it wasn't effective at all. Jose was also trying to play on Connor's nerves at the weigh-in ceremony also. Finally, when Bruce Buffer introduced the names, the fight was on. People dreamed of this battle for years, but this fight only continued for 13 seconds. But McGregor says it was 12. Connor avoided Aldo's right hand and counterattacked with his deadly weapon, his left hook. By winning the featherweight title and becoming the N1 pound for pound fighter, Connor became the biggest star of the UFC. Before this fight, he had mentioned that he would change his weight class after winning the featherweight title. Now, he was aiming for the lightweight title. The headliner of UFC 196 was supposed to be a lightweight title fight between two champions Connor McGregor and Rafael Dos Anjos. Everything was all right until Rafael damaged his knee and pulled out from the battle one week before the fight but someone showed up to save the show. And this man was no other than Nate Diaz. He offered the UFC himself as a replacement fighter. He had had only one week for preparation, but we can't really call it a preparation period because soldiers used this last week for weight loss and recovery. This fight was held in the welterweight division, the two weight classes above than what McGregor was used to fighting, but the Notorious looked in phenomenal shape during the weigh-ins. But we can't say the same about Nate. Nate looked very skinny and it was clear that he had dropped a lot of weight in a short period of time. Finally, Connor's debut fight in the welterweight division had begun. He landed some huge shots and dropped Nate several times. He won the first round clearly, but he was gassed, and in the second round, Nate landed a great one-two combination, with McGregor countering for a takedown. Nate, of course, defended it and submitted him with a rear naked choke. It was one of the biggest upsets in UFC history, the Stockholm gangster serviced the Irishman his first ever loss in the UFC. After that loss, all Connor wanted was a rematch with Nate. In August of 2016, UFC announced that very fight. McGregor trained hard for this fight, and he worked a lot on his strategy. He opened the fight with low kicks, which was a smart move because Nate's striking base was boxing, and he was not protecting his legs at all. By hitting his legs, McGregor restricted Nate's footwork and dropped Nate several times, but he was also saving his energy and was fighting measuredly. It was one of the most brutal fights in both fighters' careers and one of the best fights in the history of the UFC. The Irishman won this battle via split decision and opened the interview with his famous words, Surprise, surprise, mother the king is back. After this, Connor finally got his opportunity to fight for the lightweight title. A lightweight title fight between newly reigned Eddie and the featherweight champion Connor had been announced by the UFC. Champion versus Champion was an exciting fight for the fans. There was lots of trash talk during the press conferences, and Connor mentioned Eddie's family, and Eddie said that if Connor didn't apologize for it, he would destroy the Irishman in the cage. But Eddie was the one who got destroyed in that bout. McGregor looked in the best shape of his career. He knocked down Eddie three times in the first round, so he was able to see every move and was able to counterattack with his left hooks. In the second round, Eddie decided to change the strategy and went in for a takedown. Still, Connor quickly defended himself from the attempt and finally finished Eddie in the second round. Connor truly is the quote machine, and he knows how to talk. He said, We are not here to take part, we are here to take it over. And he did it. He held two division golds simultaneously and was writing history. After that fight, everybody expected that Connor's next rival would be El Kakui but Connor was aiming to the other side. He wanted to share the ring with one of the best. He wanted to fight against Floyd Money Mayweather. Nobody expected that this fight would be scheduled, but it was. When he was asked what he was thinking about fighting with Floyd, he answered, who wouldn't like to dance around the ring for $180 million? Finally, in 2017, this boxing match was held between the biggest star in boxing 
and the biggest star in MMA. This was the biggest fight in combat sports history. McGregor was active at the beginning of the fight and even landed some shots against the undefeated boxer, truly the living legend. But finally, Floyd defeated him in the 10th round, and as many experts say, it is a significant achievement to stand with Floyd for 10 rounds. McGregor lost, but made a ton of money, so he was happy. After this fight, he was out for two years. He was resting, having fun. He knows how to spend money, and he knows how to have fun for sure. At the time, nobody expected his return to the fight game. Finally, UFC vacated the lightweight title, and Habib Nurmagomedov won that vacant title against Al Quinta. Connor then decided to return to the octagon because he loved this game, but this was not the only reason. Habib slapped Connor's friend Artem Lobov, so McGregor went to Habib with his family and friends and started screaming and fighting. Finally, he was arrested for this, but just paid some bail and was out. Eventually, the fight that people were waiting for, the biggest fight in MMA and UFC history, had been announced. It was easy to see that Connor was not in the best shape of his life. He was trying to break Habib before the fight, but everyone knows trash talk doesn't work on Habib. They faced each other on the octagon at UFC 229 on the 6th of October in Las Vegas. This was one of the most one-sided title fights in UFC history. People had more expectations of Connor, and he defended himself well in the first round, but he lost that round but did no damage. The third round was the only successful round for Connor. On the other hand, Connor is the first man who managed to win a round against Habib. The fourth round was the fatal round for the former double champion. Habib went for a takedown, took his back, and finished him via a neck crank submission. Herb Dean, the referee of the fight, barely stopped Habib from breaking Connor's jaw. After that stoppage, Habib threw his mouth guard to Connor's corner, jumped out from the cage, and the fight continued. Habib lost control, and he wanted to fight with Connor's friend Dylan Danis. Habib's teammates jumped into the cage and attacked Connor. All of them exchanged punches, but fortunately, UFC security stopped them. There were lots of Connor's fans in the hall and were throwing items at Habib and his team. So Dana White, the president of the UFC, decided to pull Habib out of the cage safely. Connor was so disappointed he announced retirement a few times via social media, but finally in 2020 he decided to come back. UFC offered him a fight in the welterweight division against Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Reach advantage, experience, great kickboxing, and BJJ sounded like an excellent challenge for the Irishman. This time, Connor wasn't using trash talk. He was kind and friendly to his rival. He showed respect every second until the fight. When the fight began, Connor tried to hit him with a left cross immediately, but Cerrone avoided it, and in the clinch, McGregor broke Cowboy's nose with shoulder strikes. Finally, he landed a massive kick right to his jaw and finished him with punches. It only took 40 seconds for the Irishman to start making people talk about him again. One year later, Connor scheduled a rematch against Dustin Poirier. This time, he was friendly and respectful to Dustin. He even promised him a donation to his foundation of $500,000. McGregor landed some good combinations in the first round of the rematch, but it was easy to see that he had changed his wide karate standing to a closed boxing stance. Dustin started working on his leg with calf kicks. McGregor won the first round, but Dustin damaged his leg, and in the second round, you could clearly see McGregor could not move well, so Dustin caught him and finished him with a KO. In their final trilogy battle, Connor broke his tibia in his lower leg at the end of the first round and suffered defeat. At this moment, he's undergoing rehabilitation. According to the UFC president Dana White, whenever McGregor will be fully recovered, he will get his opportunity to fight with Dustin Poirier for the fourth time. But let's not anticipate events because McGregor suffered a severe injury. And if you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to stay up to the minute on all things MMA. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay awesome.